Good morning, it's Jeremy. It's Friday, July the 30th. I'm just down at Harborfront. Absolutely gorgeous day. We're looking over at a, a nice Beneteau boat over there, over at uh, Lake Ontario here. And today what I'm looking at is GPS, Global Positioning System. And I've got two antennas here. I've got the uh, whip antenna that comes with a version one of the RTLSDR, and I've got a new GPS patch antenna. This patch antenna has a gain of 28 dB at uh, the L1 frequency, which is 1.57542 gigahertz. It uses RG174 coax. It's got about three meters of coax. The coax is a lot of loss at 1.5 gigahertz, let's say anywhere from 1.5 to 2 dB. So you're gonna lose about 10 dB just going from the antenna. And down here I've got the um, RTL-SDR version three. The reason I'm using version three is because on the output SMA connector here, you can turn on what's called the bias T, and that gives the voltage to operate the patch antenna. I wanted to use my older patch antenna that I had with my Trimble GPS, but it required three volts, and the RTL-SDR version three produces about five volts. So let's just see how the bias T works. There's a driver you can get. I'll just turn it on now. It's called Bias T On. So if I double click that, it recognizes the tuner there. So let's see uh, if I can see the voltage. I'll just stick my, I've got an alligator clip on the ground pin here. So let's just stick that in there. And we can see that it says about 4.99 volts. So that's the voltage on the Bias T. So what I'm going to do is two things. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the regular whip antenna and I'm going to scan the L1 to L5 frequencies to see if I can see a GPS signal. Now the GPS signal, the signal strength is around minus 130 dBm. And if you look at the noise level, I took a spectrum analyzer trace uh, before I came down here. And there's my signal hound spectrum analyzer trace. It's about one, minus 110. So at a signal level of minus 130, that's 20 dB below the noise. So we're not gonna see the GPS signal, but we'll just check it in, in any case. I'll use SDR Sharp. We'll scan all the channels. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch over to the GPS patch antenna, which will give us about another, let's say, 15 uh, dB of gain, 15 to 20 dB of gain, and we're gonna scan the channels again. Probably won't see any GPS signals, but you never know. And then after that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at some software. Um, there are various programs you can use uh, to decode uh, the RTL-SDR signals. So we'll look at uh, one set of uh, programs that I found on the internet. And maybe in a later video, I'm going to get GNU radio to decode the GPS signals. And then we'll look at a simulation of GPS and how it has a tremendous um, ability to uh, uh, come from beneath the noise using direct sequence spread spectrum. You can take a, a data signal spread it out over a wide frequency and basically it'll, you can transmit it at negative to signal to noise environment and then when you re-multiply by the, uh, the spreading signal, the, the signal pops out of the noise. It's absolutely amazing. So we're going to do that next. Okay, so we're going to use the um, version 1 RTL whip antenna and I'm going to scan all the GPS frequencies but first of all uh, what I want to do is I want to calibrate um, the RTL uh, version 3 and to do that I'm going to use a Toronto Marine Weather. I'm just down at Harbour Front here. So I'm receiving on 162.4. Uh, let me just turn the volume on. So that's the uh, Toronto Weather. And I'm going to open up the um, settings box here. I've got the gain set at 19.7 dB. And let's just see what happens as I change the parts per million correction. There's zero. There's one. Let me uh, move this out a little bit just so we can see. So what we want to do is you want to match the red line to the peak here. So it's going the wrong direction. Let's go back. So minus one is pretty well right on. Okay, so that's my calibration there. So I've got a gain of 20 dB and minus one. All right, so now I'm going to scan the... Um, uh, GPS frequencies. I'm going to start at L1. I've already set them up here in the um, the memory here. So let's go to L1. So there's L1. Let me just turn the volume down. And I'm going to go to the widest bandwidth here. 
Okay, so we don't really see anything, and we didn't we, we didn't think we would. Um, this noise level here, it's showing, uh, let's say, minus 46. Uh, as I said to you before, uh, I, did a, I did a sweep with a spectrum analyzer, and I know that the uh, noise level is around minus 110. So this, this level down here represents minus 110 dBm. And our signal, the GPS signal, is around minus 130, so it's buried beneath this noise. So we're not going to see it there. Uh, if we look at the settings, I've got the settings here. I'm on wideband FM. The bandwidth of the L1 signal is about 2 megs, uh, and this bandwidth is 250k. But anyways, you, you know, if you, if, if you were to see it, you would see a, a single peep, a peak. And we'll see that in a minute when we do the simulation. Okay, so let's go to L2. Just check on L2. There's L2, 12, 1.227.6 uh, gigahertz. So we don't see anything there. This little carrier here, I think, is a spurious component. We'll go to L3. L3, there's nothing there. We're still around minus 46. L4, nope. L5, nothing there. Okay, so we scanned all the frequencies L1 to L5, and we didn't see anything. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to shut this down, and I'm going to turn on the bias T. Okay, and then I'm going to put SDR sharp on again, and we're going to scan the frequencies again. So we've got the GPS, um, we're going to put the GPS patch antenna on. Now remember, the patch antenna has a gain of 28 dB, but we're going to lose at least 10 dB in the RG174 coax because uh, you've got a tremendous loss, a very, very small coax. You're going to get a tremendous loss in there. So I'm going to turn this off. So there's L1. Notice that my noise level has come up now because I've got the gain of the patch antenna. So before it was down at minus 46. Now it's up to about 30. So I've gained about 16 dB. Uh, 16 dB is not enough to see the signal. I don't see any signal there. Let's go up to L2. There's L2, no signal. L3, no signal. L4, no signal. L5, no signal. Okay, so with or without the patch antenna, the GPS signal is still uh, just below the noise level. And we'll see how with autocorrelation you can bring the signal up when I do the simulation. But let's use some software now to actually get the, the GPS signal. Okay, so now that we've uh, checked uh, L1 to L5 frequencies with and without the GPS patch antenna, we couldn't see our signals because they're buried beneath the noise. Now let's decode them. So I've turned on the uh, bias T voltage. I've got the patch activated. So we're going to go into GNSS and we're going to launch that program. There we are, GNSS SDR GUI. It's the Windows version of the program. Now, I've only selected GPS. I've turned all these other ones off. I found it too, took too long to um, synchronize. And also, you got to be very careful here with the PPM. I started off with zero, and my PPM is somewhere between zero and minus one. So it didn't, it didn't sync up at zero, so at minus one, it did sync up. So be careful there and enter your latitude and longitude approximately. That's your, let's say, your DR position. So let's start this. We'll see a lot of windows open up. And then we'll start the RTK. And that stops. Okay, so we got a bunch of uh, satellite signatures here. So let's go into RTK. And open that up. So I'm going to go down to RTK Navi and start that. Okay, so there we are with RTK. We've got, let's see, looks like five very strong signals. They're all locked, and we're getting a good, uh, a good fix there on our data. There's our latitude and longitude, and that's our time that we're getting there. Okay, so we're going to look at a psycho simulation of GPS, and GPS uses direct sequence spread spectrum, 
And the first thing we're going to look at is how the spreading codes work with each other. So the same code correlated with itself has a mash over all the bits, whereas a uh, spreading code with another code of the same set will give a very, very low uh, correlation. So let's, uh, we have two gold codes here. These are the codes used in GPS, and they're also used in CDMA. Let's look at what happens when we run this simulation. I think the codes are 31 bits. So I'll run the simulation. And um, that's the uh, code at the top, and that's the code at the bottom. You can see that they're the same code. So there's a match over every bit, and when you add it up, uh, you get to 31. So <clears throat> there are 31 bits. Each bit times itself gives you a 1, and when you add that all up, you get 31. Now let's, <clears throat> let's change one of these sequences to give us a different code. So I'm going to put an 8 there. Now <clears throat> that'll give me a different gold code. So let's run this. Okay, and now you can see that the correlation is, I think it works out to like one or something like that. So there's very, very low correlation. So that's the whole idea that you can have uh, in CDMA and in GPS, you can have all sorts of signals sitting on top of each other. They're going to use um, spreading sequences uh, or gold codes from a single set. And uh, when the code gets multiplied by itself, it gives a very high correlation when the code gets multiplied by another member of the set, which is different, it has a very, very low correlation. That means we can separate our signals. So let's look at a CDMA system. So here's a model of a CDMA system used in telephony. Um, I've got one user there, and then I've got two more users, K and L. And the idea of this model is to show you that you can have in this case, three users sitting on top of each other, but we can distinguish uh, the one user because it has uh, uh, its own code. So, for instance, here we've got a low-speed data signal. This would be the voice of a tele telephony user. And there's the spreading sequence, which is a, a, gold, a, a gold code. And then we have the other two signals talking at the same time. It's modulated BPSK by a sine, sine wave here. And then on the receiver, what you do is you decode the signal with the same sine wave, you low pass filter it, and then you multiply by this particular code. So this is the same code as this code, and then the original signal comes out. If we wanted to receive this particular channel, then the spreading, the despreading signal would be this code. So you pick the code of the signal you want to uh, receive. So let's run this and see what happens. So what's happening here is the correlator is working, and you can see it's adding up over every um, every information bit. It's adding up the uh, correlation match, and it goes up to about 30 or 31. And that's the received information signal, okay, which is this identical to what was sent. Okay, so that's what was received and that's what was sent. There's a delay there and the delay is due to the low pass filter. <clears throat> okay, so let's stop that and let's look at GPS now. Okay, so here we have our model of our GPS signal. So instead of having um, two other users, what I've done here is there's my user. So in this particular case, the data signal here would be the nav signal. This would be the navigation uh, data at 50 bits per second. And there's my spreading code. Okay, that would be at 1.023 megahertz. And what I'm doing here, instead of adding several other signals, similar signals, I'm just adding a lot of noise. To, I'm going to show you here how uh, with the spread spectrum signal, you can have your signal sitting way below the noise and yet receive it. So I'm, I'm adding Gaussian noise here. It's going to be a humongous amount of noise. And at the receive end, I'm using the same model as CDMA. I'm going to multiply by the receive carrier, which is identical to the transmit carrier. It's transmitting at BPSK. And you can see that we can recover our signal. So let's run this. <clears throat> so here's my... 
Here's my CDMA signal or my um, spread spectrum signal. That's the data signal spread by the code multiplying BPSK modulating the carrier. And look at all this noise, a huge amount of noise I'm adding to this. Okay, and then on the receive end, there's my integrator working just as before. Um, and I'm gonna compare the, the uh, magnitude there and that's what I'm getting. So I'm getting exactly the same uh, waveform uh, at the receive end that, that I transmitted. So that just shows you one property of, of um, direct sequence spread spectrum is that you can take your signal and bury it in the noise and still recover it perfectly.